Well, Sky Synology correspondent Tom Cheshire is with me. Um, Tom, the Chinese authorities are saying we shouldn't jump to conclusions, but clearly the American authorities believe they've got a, enough evidence to be able to point the finger. Well, exactly. They said it would be irresponsible. They didn't deny the attack either. But the thing, it's quite rare for America to come out and name China as the recipient. But this is happening the whole time behind us. This is a map from a cybersecurity company called Norse, and this shows all the DDoS attacks happening right now. A DDoS attack is when you overwhelm a server with loads of requests, which brings it down. And you can see how often this is happening. And up in the top here, this is where attacks are originating from. Lots from China up there, but then United States is a second, so they're giving as good as they're taking. So this is always happening. The U.S. government is working with cyber weapons, so the famous one was Stuxnet, which uh, put an Iranian nuclear facility offline for a bit. The Iranians claimed that last month they were also hacked by the Americans and oil refinery was attacked. So everyone's doing this. It's quite rare, though, for a country to come out and say someone has hacked us. And again, there's a problem of just because it happened in China, and they're, they're saying these were Chinese hackers. Those could be criminals, those could be people working in the government agency, they have a huge cyber division over there, or it could be a mixture of the two. It could be criminals with the aid of intelligence agencies. So online, it's all really hard to tease out. So the fact that the United States have come out and said this is China is quite a big deal. And how easy is it going to be for the American authorities to be able to stem the flow? Well, it, they say they detected in April, but the hackers had been in there since last year. And this is the way hacks work a lot. You gain access and then you, you try and keep as quiet as possible, snoop around once you've scoped out the sort of facilities, then you make off with all the data and that's when people realize. Um, so they'll be hoping to stop it. And they're just, first of all, they need to find out exactly what's been taken, what data has been lost. And it sounds like it could be up to four million records of quite sensitive personal information. But it is only one trove. Last um, month as well, we had the hack of Adult Friend Finder, um, which is a private website. It was hacked by a private individual who's offering that database for sale for $20 million to the highest bidder, or you can get a look at it for $16,000. Now, that is a private individual who's done that. But there are U.S. senators on there. There are British MPs, apparently, from people who've seen the database. They tell me there are British MPs on there. So that could also be useful, the same sort of information, but actually a lot more personal. So to make this distinguish between government and private but again, in this messy online world that we have here, those distinctions aren't so useful anymore.